Good morning on this glorious and sunny Easter season morning. We welcome you in the name of the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. We have re you've reached the live stream worship of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. And this is the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, May 3rd, 2020. You'll find a PDF copy of the bulletin on our website at popappleton.org. And on the left side, underneath today's date, just click on that and you can open that up. Serving you today are Pastor Jennifer Dene, who's preaching, our musician, Colleen Perrine, and also uh, Nate Rowinski is doing the, uh, the magic behind the curtain today with projection. We have some special things for you today as well. We have a previously recorded children's message by Brigetta and a children's song that Colleen is going to be leading us in. So watch for that around the uh, time just before the sermon. We also have something special in that our lay reader for our scriptures today is Leah Johnson. And... Um, She'll be doing readings that have been previously recorded. So we thank Leah for those. And we would like to share that opportunity with all of you. And that goes for anyone in the congregation. If you would like to do readings for our worship service, we would uh, ask you to coordinate that through Lori at our office at popappleton.org. And we can get you those readings and assist you with recording that on your phone or other device and then getting those to us. And we would love to have you doing that for worship. A few more announcements as uh, before we begin. The Ministry of Prince of Peace continues during this time. At the end of our service, there will be an exciting opportunity to reach out and serve others in our community that our long-range planning ministry is putting together. There will be a video that you'll want to stay around to see. We are postponing our spring annual meeting this year, which was going to be scheduled in two weeks. But instead of that meeting, we, after worship on that Sunday on May 17th, Immediately after our worship, we'll have our president of the congregation, Greg Knudsen, will be giving us an update on several things that the council is working on. And also at that time, he will announce when our spring meeting will occur. Your pastors will also give updates at that meeting, and we'll be live streaming that, and you'll have an opportunity to uh, give us your questions and comments, and we will endeavor to answer those as we go along during that uh, brief time together on May 17th. One function of that spring meeting is to elect some new council members, including a mission outreach chairperson. We have several members who have served their maximum number of terms. And so we will have openings at president and vice president, secretary and treasurer. And this is where we need your help. We need you to pray about this, about who you think would be a blessing to serve us all on council as we move forward with the Lord's work here. Or maybe that person is you. We oftentimes don't see the gifts that we bring. So I urge you to pay attention to the Spirit's guidance on this for yourself and others. And at any rate, we would like to hear from you. And if you have any questions or want to know what is entailed in any of these different opportunities before us, we would encourage you to get in contact with Pastor Jennifer or myself or Eric Wingender. Eric's uh, email is eric, E-R-I-C dot 
Wingender, I W I N G E N D E R at tdsmetro.com. So Eric dot Wingender at tdsmetro.com. And we'll have that information out there so you'll have an opportunity to respond to him or respond to your pastors. We hope you're enjoying all the pop-ups and Bible studies and hymns and services that are on site at popappleton.org. And please let us know how we can serve you even more. There will be a Zoom Bible study this Wednesday at 6.15. The topic is Handling Crises, Starting Over, with a story of an adult, the adulterous woman in John 8, 1 through 11. Don't forget about the video at the end of our worship this morning, and I'll remind you of that when we get a little bit closer to it, and also having an opportunity to volunteer for reading of our scriptures and sending them to us. We begin our worship with our call to worship. Jesus our Lord is risen. 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 We continue with our thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him into new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. And the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus's wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus the Christ, our Lord, and the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song, the King of Love, my Shepherd is. Grow with food, 
lost you'll be deaf. continue with our greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie. prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security 
to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Doing the right thing does not guarantee that one will experience, not experience difficulties, hardships, rejection, or even suffering. Here, Christ is presented as the model for our path of endurance and loyalty to God, particularly amid adversity. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. It is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We want, now we'll hear a children's message by Brigetta, followed by a song with Colleen. Hey, everybody. Good morning. Last week, we spent some time talking about looking for God and God sightings and seeing God at work in our daily lives. And I gave you some activities to do to try to remember that message and to share it as well. And some of those activities were where we made disciples in Jesus to help us remember and retell the story of the road to Emmaus. And we also made some binoculars to remind us to look for those God sightings and to see God at work in our daily lives and to have fun looking for those things. So I wanna thank those of you who shared your projects on Facebook. They were great. And I am so looking forward to seeing what projects show up on there this week. So thank you. Now this week, we're gonna talk about listening. Today, our gospel reading is from the book of John where Jesus is talking about heaven with the Pharisees and how he is the only way to get to heaven. He is our gateway to heaven. And to help the Pharisees understand, Jesus decided to use an example where he compared himself to a good shepherd and all of us to sheep. So you see, a shepherd is responsible for taking care of sheep. And the sheep learn to trust and follow their shepherd because the shepherd will guide the sheep to places where they can find grass to eat and water to drink, places to rest, and, and the shepherds just help make sure the sheep don't wander off. So the sheep learn to listen for their shepherd um, because they know that the shepherd will take care of them, just like we listen to Jesus because we know Jesus will take care of us and guide us because he is our shepherd. So I have some activities for you to do this week. The materials that you need are in the bulletin, so you can refer back to that, but I'm gonna go over it right now as well so you can see some of the things. Um, so the first thing, carrying on from last week with our stick puppets, I made a stick puppet of a shepherd and made it the same way, taped the stick to the back, and then I also made a sheep. So for the sheep, do you know where your sheep is? Do you know where the sheep is? Do you see it? It's, it's behind. There's the sheep. So for the sheep, I also added some cotton balls to make her nice and fluffy and they're both on the stick. So. Hopefully this will be something fun you can do um, in remembering the story of the Good Shepherd. Another thing that um, I have for you to try is a snack. So what you'll need for the snack is marshmallows. Um, I have colorful ones. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. Graham crackers, um, chocolate chips, and frosting. So you're going to take the graham cracker and you're going to frost it. And then on top of that, you're going to put two chocolate chips for eyes, and then you're going to stick the marshmallows on top of it. And what you're going to end up with is this. So I kind of feel like mine looks a little bit like a unicorn, but it's a sheep and um, it's fun and it's yummy. So feel free to try that. And then finally, because we're talking about listening, I wanted to give you something you could do where you could play around with that a little bit. And so for this project, you're gonna need um, two cups, plastic paper, doesn't matter, two paper clips, a long string, thick string or yarn, and then some scissors. So you're gonna poke holes in the bottom of each of your cups. Um, parents might need to help with that. And then you're gonna take each end of your yarn 
and stick it through the bottom of each cup. And then you're gonna tie the yarn to the paper clip because then what that does is that makes it so that um, the string doesn't slide out. So then what you can do is you can take, two people can take a cup and walk as far apart as you can until the, the string becomes kind of tight, not too far, but so it's like this. And then you can take turns talking and listening um, into the cups because you'll be surprised what you can hear. So please remember to share your creations with us on our Facebook page and remember to listen for Jesus guiding you and being your good shepherd. Take care. And you can do the motions too. Here we go. I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul will keep. I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't wanna be a goat. No, I don't wanna be a goat. No, cause they got no hope. I don't wanna be a goat. No. So who I wanna be? I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And pray the Lord my soul to be. I just wanna be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't wanna be a Pharisee. I don't wanna be a Pharisee. Cause they're not Pharisee. I don't wanna be a Pharisee, but what do you wanna be? I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a child of God. I just want to be a child of God. And I want to tread where his feet have trod. I just want to be a child of God. Sing it with me. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from our Good Shepherd, Jesus the Christ. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, I bet none of you have ever met a shepherd. I have when I was a student, an exchange student in Germany many years ago. My friend and I had gone for a bike ride and we need directions. So we stopped when we saw a shepherd and his small flock of sheep and his dog near the bike path. We walked out into the grass to talk to him while well, my friend did all the talking. I just watched the sheep munching grass and the dog staring at them intently. The shepherd gave us directions and so we headed back to our bike. When we got back there, we saw the shepherd had turned and was walking away. He was walking toward the hillside. We looked at each other like, he's not just gonna leave his sheep here with us. So we stayed there until, until we saw him at the top of the hill. And then he turned and made a sound, a call, and the sheep lifted their heads. He made that call, that sound again, and the sheep trotted off in his direction with the dog behind them. We watched. We watched as the sheep followed the shepherd then over the hill and out of sight. This shepherd gave us directions, but he also gave direction to his sheep by calling them, by calling them. And the sheep followed their shepherd because they knew his voice. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we hear in our gospel reading from John that Jesus is our shepherd and we are his sheep. We, the sheep, hear our shepherd's voice and we follow. 
Jesus, our good shepherd, calls us by name. Jesus knows us. We belong to him. We have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ in our baptism. Jesus has named us and claimed us as God's beloved ones. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God living in us, with us always, and growing in us the knowing and the understanding of Jesus, our Good Shepherd's voice. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, calls us by name and leads us, going ahead of us. This is good news, that Jesus goes ahead of us, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We never know exactly what's going to happen in the future, but in these days of the pandemic, our future may feel even more uncertain. In the chaos of this situation, we may feel frustrated and angry and confused. We don't know what may happen in the future, but we do know that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, goes ahead of us. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, goes ahead of us, guiding us along the way. He is there, going before us, through the rough terrain in the darkest valley, with a rod to fend off our enemies and a staff to pick us up when we fall. We do not fear, for Jesus, our Good Shepherd, is with us. He is with us, going before us, preparing the way for us. Jesus goes ahead of us, calling his sheep to listen to his voice and to follow. So the question for us is, are we listening to Jesus's voice? Do we know the voice of Jesus versus all the other voices that we hear? We hear all kinds of voices, the voices of family and friends, the voices from TV and radio, the voices of co-workers, the voices in our own heads, and so on. We hear all kinds of voices, but we need to be careful, careful about the voices we nurture, the voices we listen to over and over again, the voices we nurture so that they become a part of our thinking and behaving. There are voices out there that are like the thief who comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. We need to speak against those voices but we also don't want to become like those voices. Sometimes the most damaging voice is the one in our head, in our mind. A voice that may say to us, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough or strong enough or something. We find something lacking in ourselves and we don't let ourselves forget it. But this is not the voice of our Good Shepherd. Our Good Shepherd comes to us and speaks words of love and forgiveness, words of peace and comfort, words of hope and new life. How do we know the voice of our Good Shepherd? Martin Luther said that as sheep, we need to have acute ears distinguishing Christ's voice from other voices. And to do this, we must cling to the word. In John 1.1, 1, 1, we hear that the word, the word of God, became flesh and dwelt among us. That word of God is Jesus Christ. We cling to Jesus Christ, the word, as he is revealed to us in scripture. We cling to Jesus Christ, the word, as he is proclaimed to us in preaching. And we cling to Jesus Christ, the word, as he is taught to us and remembered by us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the word, we come to know the voice of our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. We hear the word through worship, through reading and studying scripture, through devotions and prayer, through song, and so on. We need to daily hold on to the word of God to Jesus Christ, and to let him speak into our hearts and our minds. 
A simple way that we can do this throughout our day is by repeating a Bible verse, like, my help comes from the Lord, or fear not, I am with you, I will give you strength, or my peace, I give to you, or the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Choose a Bible verse that has meaning for you, that can help you to hear the shepherd's voice when other voices come, when other voices come to scare, to confuse, to anger, or to destroy. The sheep follow the shepherd's voice because they know his voice. In the scripture reading from John, we also hear that Jesus says, I am the gate. Shepherds were also gates. The shepherd at night would lay his body down in front of the opening of the sheepfold. No sheep could get out, running away frightened, and no predator could get in to kill the sheep. Jesus invites all to enter into his sheepfold, to be saved, to be, go in and out, to have pasture, to receive life, to receive abundant life. Jesus has given us abundant life, for our good shepherd has laid down his life for the sheep. Yes, we may die, we will die, but we will not be killed. We will live again as resurrected people. Jesus will be our shepherd in our resurrected life. And he will guide us to the springs of the water of life. And God will wipe every tear from our eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. We look forward to this abundant life to come. And also, Jesus gives us this life now, here, and now. When we listen to Jesus, our Good Shepherd, and follow his voice, he will lead us to life, to abundant life. What is abundant life here and now? Abundant life for us is our faith in Jesus, Jesus who comes to us to meet our deepest need. Abundant life is continually receiving the love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ, and then offering it to others. Abundant life is having peace in the midst of turmoil, strength in the midst of suffering, having security in the face of the unknown. Abundant life is seeing God answer prayer, providing for us and for others. Abundant life is knowing that our lives have purpose and meaning, we are called and empowered by the Holy Spirit to bring God's reign of love, peace, and justice to the world. Abundant life is this and more. It is Jesus coming to meet us, to meet our deepest need. When we listen to the voice of our Good Shepherd and follow him, he will lead us to abundant life. Abundant life is not only hearing the voice of our Good Shepherd and following him, but it is also speaking that life, speaking that life to a hurting world. We are living in a hurting world, and perhaps we see it now more than ever. The COVID-19 virus is like a thief that has come to steal and destroy. It has taken 66,000 lives at this point in the United States. There are millions unemployed. Others work faithfully and fearfully with not enough protective equipment. People are living in social isolation, some very lonely and depressed, others stressed out and exhausted, and so on. Where can we speak with the voice of life and hope? We hear those verses, voices in the words of thanks and support 
for frontline workers and others. We hear those voices in the words of, I love you, spoken to patients by nurses on behalf of families who cannot visit them. We hear those words, those voices in the words reminding us that we are all in this together, that everyone is valuable, that we are all connected, and we cannot take one another for granted. Last Sunday after worship, I found on my car window a heart, a red heart with the words on it, thank you for keeping us going here at POP, Prince of Peace. Hearts were left on the few cars in the parking lot. Some of us may not be able to do much to help out in this time of need, in this pandemic, but we can speak words of life and hope to others. Who is it that needs to hear your words of life and hope? Who needs to hear your voice? Jesus is calling you to speak. You can write a note or send an email or a card. You can call someone on the phone. Is there a scripture you can share with someone who is struggling with their faith or struggling in their life right now? How can you tell them about the abundant life that Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd, gives? How can you use your voice to speak words of hope and life? Jesus, our Good Shepherd, calls us to follow him, to listen to his voice, to trust that he is going ahead of us, preparing the way for us. Jesus, our Good Shepherd, calls us to live in the abundant life that he gives and to speak his words of life and hope to others. So let us continue to listen, to follow, to receive the love, the hope, and the life, the abundant life that our Good Shepherd Jesus Christ gives. And let us share it with others. Amen. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk in the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with a love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, 
Comfort me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into love. We turn to the Nicene Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A word about our offerings. We know that at these times, that these are difficult times, financially, socially, emotionally, and spiritually. We miss being together and physically connecting with one another. During these times, the local and worldwide ministry of our congregation and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America continues. Our staff continues to work from their homes and make phone calls and connections. While you are on our website at popappleton.org, you will notice that there are videos that our staff has put up and we call your attention to those. So we ask you to continue to be as generous as you are able to during this time. And we trust the Lord will guide us all through this. You may send your offering to us here. We check the mail regularly, or you can send your offering electronically through the secure portal on our website. And here is how you do that. On our website at popappleton.org, go to the right side of the landing page, the first page, and go to the red Donate Now button on the right side of that page. And know that when you access that, you're going to a site that is Giving Plus. But it doesn't have a fancy landing page, though if you look up in the header, you will see GP for Giving Plus dot Vanco payments. The reason that this is not fancier is that in order to have one that looks fancier, we would have to pay a fee for that. And we want to be good stewards of the resources that you give us. So we continue to use this resource that we have used for several years, and we ask that you would go there. There's a, a PDF link below the red Donate Now button as well, explaining how to access this 
on your mobile devices as well. Also, you will notice when you go to donate that there will be an opportunity to donate to a ministry that Long Range Planning will be telling you about in our video at the end of our service this morning. We continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have blessed us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. During our prayers of the church, each intercession petition will end with me saying, Lord, in your mercy, and you're asked to respond, you hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places and praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for wrapping your loving arms around our worldwide fearful flock of followers. Calm the anxieties of your world's leaders and scientists. Help us remember this unity that we all have as fellow travelers, frightened sheep on the trail. Help us to lead others with the gentleness that you first used to lead your disciples. Bring us to still waters as we walk through our valleys of doubt, death, and despair, and lead us to your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who feed us, those who plant and harvest crops, those who work in food processing plants, drive trucks, stock shelves. Bless us all with patience, gratitude, good health, and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Help us to raise up our voices through bread for the world and always seek to share what we have with others. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. We pray for those who are known to this congregation, many who are part of this congregation, Todd awaiting surgery, Ron, Karen, Dan, Phil, Julie, those who are undergoing treatment for cancer, such as Judy, Jan, and Mark, and others, Tara, Tony, Renee, Joan, Denise, Paul. Members who are physically homebound, such as Harry, Jean, Don, and Yvonne, Don and Sue, Peggy, Grace, Bernie, Dixie, Lorraine, 
and Karen. We also pray for those who are grieving, such as the family of Jody and Adele Chrisman on the death of Jody's mother, Diane, and Greg and Cindy Grunert on the death of Greg's mother, Dorothy, and the family of Olivia Werner, who mourn her death. We pray for those who suffer during this time in isolation and the grips of drug dependencies, grips of loneliness and fear. We ask that you would give them special comfort and where we are able that you would empower us to reach out to them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. And Lord, with all of the sickness, all of the grief, and all of the worry that we have going through our days, let us remember the joy that is before us. Let us remember the safety that we have in the places where we live, the health that we enjoy, the daily bread that you provide. Lord, we thank you for the safe birth of Daniel Michael Heron, a son to Taylor and Miranda in the Chicagoland area. And we celebrate with Jean and Jim, the proud grandparents, and for those who have celebrations every day. We look to you and we give you great thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayer that our Lord has taught us as his disciples to pray, gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Remember, after we conclude our service, which we will have our dismissal. So we have the final blessing, our closing hymn, and then our dismissal. And after our dismissal, we have a video that we want you to stay around for from the Long Range Planning Ministry. Now our final blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our hymn, Have No Fear, Little Flock.
uplift and restore you. Praise the Lord high above. Thankful hearts raised to God, thankful hearts raised to God, for he stays close beside you, in all things works with you. Thankful hearts praise the Lord. Our dismissal. Prince of Peace is a family of Christians growing in faith and reaching out in love. Be at peace, my sisters and brothers. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Good morning, Prince of Peace congregation. Too often around our community, our friends, our neighbors, and our congregational members are finding their cupboards looking more like this. With very few items in their cupboards. Prince of Peace Long Range Planning Committee is organizing a food drive to help supplement the needs of those that are affected by the current COVID-19 crisis. We need your help as a congregation and as a community to help support this food drive and hygiene drive. This May 9th and May 16th, we will be having an opportunity for you to support those in need. We will have two drop-off dates, again on May 9th and May 16th, for you to be able to bring in canned goods and hygiene items and any financial donations that we will be collecting in our church parking lot from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We will be taking all the preventative measures recommended by the CDC, along with face masks and gloves for those collecting the food items. We will also be practicing social distancing during the drop-off time so you may feel safe donating. Again, we need your help this next two Saturdays, May 9th and May 16th, to come out and support your church, your community, by growing in faith and reaching out to those impacted by the current COVID-19 crisis.